Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can install Haba on Ubuntu 22.04. The same sets of steps will also work all the way down to 18.04 of the Ubuntu. So the first thing I'm going to show you is what I, what I have is I've got a Ubuntu set up uh, as a VPS uh, image here uh, on uh, DigitalOcean. And this is the IP address. I'll be SSH into it here shortly. So I'm going to copy this guy here and I'm going to right click and open a terminal session here. I'm gonna drag it down here, zoom in a bit. So SSH, the username is root at, and that's the IP address that I copied on the clipboard from uh, DigitalOcean uh, VPS. So I'm gonna hit enter here, because this, um, this is the first time I'm logging into, or rather SSH into the, uh, into the Ubuntu machine. They'll ask you for fingerprint verification, just say yes here, and then they'll ask you to log in. So I've set up my password as, Like that and you will be able to get in here so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna change my password so it's easy to remember because uh, uh, DigitalOcean requires you to have a bit of complicated password so it's the command to change the password be sudo p-a-s-s -S w-d and the username is root they'll prompt you to get the new password it's gonna be lowercase r-a-b-i and again r-a-b-i and now you have the password let's try again control d to exit out of the SSH session here and then after that, let's SSH in again, and then RABI, and it should work. So another thing you're gonna have to do is uh, log in. You need to log in as a root user. To log in as a root user is SUDU, sudo SU, and hit enter. And they'll normally prompt you to add enter the password. I'm already logged in as a root user. That's why they are not prompting me for any password. The reason why I'm asking you to do this is because um, most of the command that you're going to run require admin level of uh, uh, access to actually run those command. So without further ado, uh, before installing any packages, I like to install uh, or rather do a app update and app upgrade like that, uh, mainly because uh, I'm going to update all my packages here. So hit enter here. This is going to take a bit to do, so I'll be right back here. Once the app update and app upgrade is completed, let's uh, install a couple of packages that I will need throughout the process of installing Hover here. So this is a command. I'll leave the command, uh, all this command that I'm showing right now today in the description section of the video. Uh, you don't have to type. Okay, those packages are all installed. Okay, the next thing I have to do is to install Docker here. It's a pretty standard Docker installation command. Again, all the commands I'm showing here to install Docker and the Harbor will all be available on the description section of the video here. Okay, those are the prerequisites to install Docker. Now to install the actual Docker itself is this command here. Once the Docker installation is complete, let's check its status by running this systemctl command here. You should see it as active and running in green. This means that your Docker is running and good. But if it's not active and green, let's press Ctrl+C c to get out of systemctl. What you can do is you can basically run uh, this command here. So this command basically starts your Docker and basically uh, enables your Docker to be running as a service when your Ubuntu restarts here. I'm not going to run this command because my Docker is already running. There's a couple of more commands that you're going to have to run to add your system user to the Docker group using the following two commands here like this. Now once that's done, your Docker is completely installed and it's good to go. The first thing I, I really like to do is basically run Docker version and this if your Docker is installed properly, it should show you the correct version here. At the same time, I'm going to highlight this is the version I'm using for this demonstration here. And likewise, you can always run all the regular Docker command that you use on a regular basis here like this. So at this moment, there should not be any image or container in your system here. Another thing that you need is you need to have a Docker Compose installed. Uh, normally on this version of the Docker, 
you will have the compose when you do this you should get something like this but if you do not have it these are the commands that you need to run I'll leave it on the description as well so that you don't have to type but if you type docker compose and you get a feedback of version number then you don't really have to do the steps that's shown on the right hand side of the screen here so once that's done uh, the next section is to install your harbor here let's start off by uh, issuing this command here this command will take uh, a bit to run I'll be right back once that's completed let me clear this guy here basically run this uh, to unzip your tar file and once you unzip it if you ls in here you can see that you have a harbor folder here let's go inside the harbor folder by issuing this command here and if you have a quick look at the directory you can see a series of files that's available here so the next step is to actually configure this uh, so that it will fit your requirement here so if you need to uh, install a certificate uh, you need to do the following steps as shown on the right hand side here basically uh, I'm demonstrating using the less encrypt and then basically install the cert bot and then get a certificate and after that uh, you got to make a directory and then install that certificate in that directory but I'm not gonna do this I'm gonna keep things simple so that uh, everybody can follow here so once your certificate is ready it's in an appropriate directory using the command on the right hand side what you're gonna have to do is you basically have to open a text editor uh, on Ubuntu you have a nano if you don't have a nano you can use Vi or Vim. I'm going to use Nano and basically try to edit my Harbor YAML file here with a TP uh, template here like this and hit enter. You should get all this um, description or rather all this text file that you see on the screen right now here. There's a couple of things that you're going to have to edit. The first one would be the host name itself. The host name is uh, going to be the IP address. If you have a domain name, just enter uh, your domain name, whichever uh, could be but uh, since this is a VPS for demonstration purpose uh, I, I only have an IP address so basically I'll be using this VPS IP address here or the same IP address that I SSH into it like that here that's the key that everybody has to make that change here so this is a HTTP uh, operating on port 80 if your co company does not allow port 80 you want to change it this is the spot you're gonna have to change so if you do have a HTTPS and you have set up a certificate, you have to um, uh, edit this section uh, depending on where you store your certificate. So you're going to have to normally what what where people store them is in Acetra SSL uh, cert harbor.crt. That's the file for your certificate and your private key will be harbor.key as shown on the right hand side of the screen here. And the configuration file should look like that as shown on the right hand side here. But if you do not have uh, HTTPS, basically you could comment the whole line out like that and this is normally what uh, test system or most of the system will use until such stage where you get maturity level and the next section is the harbor admin password this is the default password capital h a r b o u r one two three four five if you want to make it more complicated you know this is where you're gonna have to change it and then the other two uh, for database that you can change your password or change the database parameter and your data volume here I'm gonna keep the database and data volume and the password to default and to exit out of nano is uh, control X and then you say safe modified buffer yes but over here you're gonna have to change from uh, harbor.yaml.template to just harbor.yaml so that it creates a brand new file is a save file under a different name you're gonna say yes and now if you do ls minus al you should see a new file that you just created you can do cat and you do harbor and yaml and if you look at it just to verify and make sure that uh, all the changes that you made are reflected here correctly if you go all the way up here you will see the ip address so i'm just gonna clear this guy here next thing i have to do is to basically uh uh, install harbor as a container so now if you look at the docker image there's nothing in it and if you go docker container in your system there should be nothing in it after installing uh, the harbor uh, the, there's, there will be images and container that's why I was trying to show you the list here so if you look at ls minus al the file to run and install harbor would be this file here if you do not have this file uh, something went wrong on your harbor unzipping and all that stuff right so just to be aware of it so install sh like this 
and hit enter. If your installation is successful, you should see Habo has been installed and started successfully and all these uh, images and containers should look like that created and started. And just to uh, verify, you can go docker image ls. This is the list of images. Uh, there's a few images or rather a few different images or services that runs by the Harbor itself. And if you also do docker container and do ls, you should be looking at a few different services that's running on the background here like this. So once you have this and this image is all running and happy, what you can do is you can go back to your browser and then basically type the IP address of your Ubuntu machine. I'm going to copy this on my clipboard because that's where my um, PPS is running on and basically say paste the IP address in here and hit enter. You should be um, confronted with uh, the Harbor login um, web page like this. The default username is admin and the password I've set up in my harbor uh, was capital H A R B O R 1 2 3 4 5. If you've forgotten uh, where I have set up this password here, let me show you again just as a reminder. So in here if you look at your directory here, this is the configuration file that you configured. You go nano or rather let's do nano yeah and then go um, harbor YAML and hit enter and you can see that your default password or your admin password is this that's how it was set up so control X to exit and let's go back to our web page here and admin is a default user and this is the password I'm just gonna say remember me and log in here and now you're in harbor and you can navigate you can create connection to your uh, docker hub and put all your repository wherever you like that concludes the Harbor installation tutorial. If you do like this tutorial, please like and subscribe and have a great day. Bye.